Hi right, guys, Mac Double Tap. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm going to start a little do-it-yourself gunsmithing section. I mean, I've always done how-to videos, but uh, as some a lot of you guys know, I've opened my own gun shop, uh, getting my FFL, I'm waiting on the paperwork, I'm in the middle of the virus thing, so it slowed it down. But uh, I kind of wanted to do just random gunsmithing because I get a lot of people... <clears throat> that'll bring me guns and they'll say hey this isn't working right it won't zero it won't whatever and one of the more common problems i run into is scope bases being mounted either incorrectly or uh not mounted properly so uh we got just a weaver tactical pickerel we're going to put on this remington 700 and uh so a couple things you need to know one make sure and i don't care if the guy at the shop tells you this is it. I went to a very quality gun shop the other day, and uh, I don't know where I put it. I told them I wanted a pick rail for on top of a 700 short action. Guy walks out, he hands it, and it's a Weaver brand. And I said, now you're sure that's a pick rail, not a Weaver rail? Because there is a difference. And he says, no, 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 it's... It's, it's definitely a, a pick and tinny rail. So, what I should have done, what I should have done, was check. I didn't. I gave him some trust and levity and, you know, and uh, get it home. <laughs> didn't even look in the car like an idiot. And it was a weaver rail. So, anyway, we are going to install this pick rail. Uh, this is a 20 MOA rail it's it leans 20 minutes of angle down it's for shooting a little bit longer range so here's some things you're going to need to properly mount these some blue loctite don't use red loctite you get i get these guns in all the time that i end up having to drill and i mean i even had one i had to oversize it was horrible they perfect they destroyed a perfectly good gun uh and there's just no point. You do not need to red Loctite anything on a gun. If you do, you have other issues. So, uh, the next thing we're going to need is a decent... Man, I hope the one I need ain't broken. It's kind of looking like it is. Uh, they send an Allen wrench for mounting. And that's probably all you really need. Okay, this will work. Uh... I like to tap mine very gently, gently with a hammer. Now I say that and somebody's going, what? And worse yet, the hammer I found was this big monster uh, ex-wife beating hammer. But I'm not going to beat the shit out of it. I'm going to tap it a few times. What you can do is you're going to hold down on your screwdriver, give it a couple of taps, and that bump down will let it... It's kind of like running right a torque wrench. Uh, this is DIY, you know, not everybody has one of these little baby inch-pound torque wrench things lying around, and if you're just mounting a scope mount for yourself, are you going to go spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars on one? Of course not. So, uh, as we look on here, there's always a direction, clean it, loosen the mount, Loosely mount the base, insert the two short screws in the front. Now, that's an important one. Uh, if they're shorter screws, they, they always go up front. Uh, I don't know of a platform. I'm not saying there's one that's not out there that doesn't. But line them up. Make sure they work. Take your screws. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is you'll see how these are. Oh, you might not be able to see. Let me see. Open the camera up here. Open. There it goes. You see how that's, I mean, really flush compared to this one. See how that one's not? Here's the thing. You don't want Loctite on the bottom flat side of, the, of any bolt. A, it doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form. I like paste. There's a lot of guys that are real big into the, to, uh, the, the, the liquid i really like the paste because i can manipulate it a little better uh 
I got turned on to the paste by a guy, a mechanic, several years ago. And I've been using it ever since. So, take each screw, put a little bit of Loctite on it. Get it lined up. And when we first start putting them in, kind of go backwards once or twice. If you feel, I mean, I am putting this in with no pressure. If you feel any resistance, stop. You're cross-threading it. Number that, that is, honest to God, the number one problem with old guns or used guns that I get that I'll try to rescope them and I want to use different mounts. And, man, somebody stripped, cross-threaded it and stripped threads out and it just becomes a problem. Sometimes you can re-tap them. I mean, just chase the threads and clean it up. But if you can't put these screws down in with, like, no honest-to-God pressure you're 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 doing it wrong but uh and you don't have to i mean kill it with loctite just a couple of little you know a little bit of loctite on there put them down in now the next part i'm going to talk about i ain't sure if it's absolute true as god made green little apples uh uh accurate but it's what i do I torque them kind of like you torque bolts on a car. I will do, and I had an old gunsmith show me this. I honest to God don't know if this is something that is accurate, but I do it and my mounts don't come loose. So how I'm going to do it, I'm going to start with the inside back one and I'm going to run it down until it tight. Then I go to the inside front one. He said it has something to do with the harmonic, or how it centers itself i don't know if that's true <laughs> but that's how i do it that's how i do every one so closest to the closest give it a turn give it a turn and as i do this i get a little bit more on each one now am i psychologically turning it a little harder maybe i don't know but it's to me it's the same principle Give her a good turn. Give her a good turn. Give her a good turn. Now I've done that twice. Now there's an old mechanic taught me that if you torque this, if you take a bolt, you can put a half inch bolt on a nut and a piece of steel and go and set the torque to whatever you want, four pounds or two pounds. Go back and torque it every day and you will stretch those to the point where it will break. If you put retorque it to two pounds every single day, eventually you'll break that boat, bolt, half inch bolt. So he told me to do this four times. So this is the third. And on the last one, we're going to tap. All we're going to do is put a little bit of pressure on the tightening down version. I'm not pounding it. I'm not beating the shit out of it. I'm just tapping them. That gives me gets me a little extra thread, I guess. And literally, guys, I don't put the gun in a vise. If you're turning the gun, you've got as much force as you need on your tool. Uh, just sitting there in a position. So that's it. I, I, I have mounted countless mounts that way and i've never had one come loose so anyway quick easy video mounting a uh and if you got like just good old-fashioned yeah we have real mounts same thing do this one 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 tap do this one tap then do the front uh so there it is in a nutshell uh appreciate you guys watching like share and subscribe and uh we'll be back real soon